Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. Let's talk snowboards. After the epoxy catastrophe in my last layup attempt, I decided to start my snowboard build over. And I told you guys that I would do my darndest to get through that work as fast as possible. Well, I'm here to tell you, we're back, baby. So let's take a look at everything I've done to get this new board ready to press. This is gonna be an overview, so if you want a deeper dive, check out the rest of the series. I've got videos on every step in the process. To start with, I glued up my new core. I'm using the same woods as last time, poplar and walnut, but this time around I put poplar under where the binding inserts are going to go. I kept the walnut stringers, but I made them thinner and moved them out from the middle of the board. So, for core number two, the walnut is just there to add some width to my core and perhaps some stiffness and dampening. We'll have to see how that works out on the slopes. Next up I needed an updated template for the new board. And I made a lot of changes here, so let's start by talking about the shape. It's just a smidge thinner this time around. This will allow me to get the entire width of the board into my planer, and allow me to route full wrap sidewalls into my core blank. The nose is still much longer than the tail, and the contact points on the nose are also wider, which should help it get a lot of lift and powder, but it's no longer volume shifted. The binding mounts are now centered on the side cuts. I also made some updates to the nose and tail shapes to get the aesthetics where I want them with the new edge geometry. The template itself has some updates too. Something that I really didn't like about the process so far is how many router templates you need just to shape your base and sidewalls. It seemed like for every potential shape you'd want to make, you'd need a lot of plywood just lying around. So I came up with this. It's a single template where you can use one side to route your base sheet, and you can use the other side to route your sidewall channels. In both cases, all you do is keep it aligned with your center line, route one half of the job, flip the template over, and do the other half. For the sidewalls, you're left with this little bridge between the two sides, and all you need to do is grab a chisel to clean that up. Dang, I need to sharpen my chisels, that's embarrassing. I finished my sidewall channels with a coat of oil-based polyurethane, and once that's dry, I'll give it a light sanding and we'll be ready to pour some sidewalls. While my channels were drying, I got to bending my edge wire. I've got another update to the build here. Last time I wrapped the edges all the way around the nose, this time I'm just going to do my edges on the rails. This is easier to do, it's less prone to errors, and it also reduces my material costs a bit. For my first board, I'm fine with it. And while the glue for the edges is drying, we're headed back over to the core and we're gonna pour the sidewalls. I'm using my friend Flex at 90 from Specialty Resin, just because with that particular urethane, I feel like I know what to expect. It's got a short pot life, so instead of pouring a two color swirl like I did last time, this time around I mixed and poured three separate batches of slightly different oranges. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get a really slick, subtle gradient from tip to tail on the board. Another change for the build, I decided to move away from the vac bag and do a clamped two-sided mold. You can totally do this with a vac bag, that method is completely reliable. My problem is that the mold I made just barely fits in my bag, and the last thing I want is to get all the way through my layup just to end up panicking because I can't get the board into the bag to press it. So to eliminate that possible failure, I put together the top half of my mold. I made it the exact same way as the bottom half, and I even used the cutoffs from the same pieces of foam. Also, since the molds are going to be clamped, I back them with some 3 8 plywood. This will add some strength and rigidity and will help to distribute my clamping forces. Once my urethane was cured, I needed to plane the core back down to the proper thickness. This has the added benefit of getting rid of the wood at the bottom of the urethane channels. Once it was the right thickness, it's on to the next step, profiling. Last time I used this 3D printed cradle to profile my core, and I had some issues with tearing out and shattering. 
Some of that was due to the length of the core, so this time I left a lot of extra material at the nose and tail outside of my sidewall channels to account for planar sniping. I also got a ton of great tips from you guys saying that it would help to fasten my core blank down more firmly. To do that, I needed more surface area than I have on this printed grid, so I used the most high-tech of solutions, duct tape. When it comes to holding the core in the cradle, I also got a tip about this tape right here. I can't find the comment that recommended it, I think it's lost to Facebook's history, but whoever pointed me in this direction, thank you. It's a tape for adding grip to golf clubs, and it's like a really strong double-sided masking tape. So I laid some strips down on my cradle, peeled off the paper backing, and seated my core. Hey, I think that worked. Seems pretty good. And just in case any of you guys think I'm some kind of expert on these things, hey, Chris, do you know what you're doing? I have no idea what I'm doing. Once the core was fixed in place, it was time to pull the trigger and run it through the planer. Success! Now I just need to remove it from the cradle without breaking it. Freedom! You! I did it. And I am so stoked about this. A perfectly profiled core, full wrap sidewalls, this thing is an absolute boss. Next up, I've got a drill for my inserts, and I'm using another experimental 3D printed drilling jig. This one worked a little better than my last one, but without pilot holes, I had to get creative about how to drill the recesses for the flanges of the binding inserts. This still feels like an overly complicated solution, I think it's back to the drawing board again. Lastly, I drilled holes and glued pegs in place for my core and base alignment. And boom, we're done. Just like that, all caught up and ready to press. I've got my new base sheet and edges, I've got my new core and sidewalls, I've got my veneer top sheet left over from last time, I've got my glass cloth ready. I've also got a new epoxy formula to try. The pot life is twice as long as the last one I used, and it claims to be thinner, which should make wetting everything out much easier. So, in the next video, we're gonna press a snowboard. We're doing it. The forecast here in the Catskills says that we're gonna get dumped on, and how cool would it be to have a handmade powder board ready to go for when the white stuff starts to fall? So, subscribe to see that go down, because it's gonna be rad. Huge thank you to my patrons. You guys helped me afford the materials for this rebuild, and it's because of your support that I was able to get back up and running again so quickly. If you dig the content here on the channel, consider becoming a supporter. It's such an enormous help, and it is so very appreciated. If you got questions or comments, leave them down below. I am always happy to chat board building with you guys. And you know I love having you along for the ride, so as always, thanks for coming through, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Oh, got a Carhartt on. I got my snow pants on. I don't think I can lift my leg that high, but I got my snowboarding pants on. And I'm standing over a space heater, and my mouth is still so cold that I can't pronounce things. I have got to rebuild this studio.